Welcome to God's house. Hey, did you see we got new front doors? Well, they actually aren't brand new, but they were redone. Now, that meant for a short time the doors were removed. But boy, it's a big trade-off. We saw the way the doors used to be, the way they are refinished now. Today we're celebrating Easter, really like we do every Sunday, but today we have a special Easter and fall service to focus on the good news of Jesus' resurrection and to show that our lives are really like those front doors. Because of Easter, we get to trade up. We're going to trade these bodies that are subject to death for new and perfect bodies that are risen from the dead because Jesus rose from the dead. We're going to trade an existence that is subject to sin and decay for an existence forever in heaven where there's no sin, no decay. Easter means we get the trade up. Thank you for being here. Thank those who are watching online. We begin the service with the singing of the first hymn. Please stand for the singing of this hymn. of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful in countless ways I have sinned against you, and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus my Savior, I pray, that I mercy on me according to your unfailing love, cleanse me from my sin, and take away my guilt. 
Friend, your sins are forgiven by the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The first scripture lesson is from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah lived about 700 years before Jesus. You notice how he speaks of the great joy at Christ's resurrection, the glory and joy we have in salvation. In that day you will say, I will praise you, Lord, although you were angry with me, your anger is turned away and you have comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day you will say, give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done, and proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel among you. The word of the Lord. We'll continue with the next one.
The second lesson is from the great resurrection chapter in the Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It shows us because of Christ's resurrection, we get to trade up our bodies, our existence, for one without sin, one with Jesus forever. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin. The power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Please stand out of joy and respect for the words of the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. Alleluia. seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They've taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, Tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them, that he had said these things to her, the gospel of the Lord. We confess the faith of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally begotten of the Father, God of God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified in the conscious fire. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for the next day.
Lord is risen. I know it's not Easter, but we can't just celebrate that one day a year. A few years back, I took my son and a friend of his to a Brewers game. Now, we had about the cheapest seats in the place. Uh, if you've been to, it's called American Family Field, that was Miller Park, right? Uh, there's a statue of Bob Euchre in like the very farthest seat away. Where we were sitting, we could just about touch the statue of Bob Euchre. So that's, that's where our seats were. We, we, we got there early because we like to watch batting practice. And as we're there watching batting practice, the stadium worker comes up to us and says, wow, you guys are here early. You must be really dedicated fans. We'd like to say thank you. Well, that's nice. Um, would you like to move up to better seats? Oh, yeah, I suppose. They're 11th row, right behind home plate. Like, is this for real? This has to be too good to be true. Okay, what's the catch? And sure enough, the stadium worker says, here's the catch. You have to give us your old tickets. Let me think about it. For like a nanosecond, right? I will gladly trade the Euchre seats for 11th row right behind home plate, right? That's what Easter is. We get to trade up. We get to trade up our existence that knows only sadness and death for an existence of eternal happiness without death. We get to trade our status from sinner to saint. We get to trade these bodies that are decaying and dying to bodies that are perfect and holy. But yeah, there's a catch. We have to go through physical death. But do you see that physical death is just trading up? Jesus went through physical death to trade up. He rose from the dead. And so that's what Easter means. We get to trade up. We get to trade up. Listen, I'm telling you a mystery. Now, mystery in the Bible doesn't mean something like spooky or like you can only find out if you do all the right investigation. The idea of a mystery is something that you don't naturally know coming out of the womb when you're born. And I've told you all, I didn't naturally know the difference between a hand towel and a dish towel when I came out of the womb. Someone had to instruct me. But you know what? It's cool. Now, I am part of the select group of people who know the difference. And see, this is what's cool. When the Bible uses the word mystery, it also has that idea that there is a select, special group of people who have been instructed and now have this special knowledge. The knowledge that Jesus is risen. And so the knowledge that we're going to trade up when we die. Death is not the end. Physical death is not just the end of an existence on earth. It's the beginning of a much better existence in heaven. Again, we're trading up our existence. We're trading up our status. We're, we're trading up our bodies. right? Because the, the, the perishable clothes itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. And as the Bible says, we're not all going to sleep, but we will all be changed. And right, and it's repeated again, changed. And the idea of this word changed is kind of exchanged. Right, that we're giving up one thing, but we're getting something else. And what we are getting, what we are exchanging is the imperishable, something that dies, or I'm sorry, perishable, something that dies, for the imperishable. Something which doesn't die. Can you think of what a trade-up that is? Now when you rub your hands together, skin cells die. It's not going to happen in heaven. We're going to trade up bodies that decay for bodies that don't. You know, right now you have to brush your teeth every day. I trust that you do. Right? Or your teeth are going to decay and fall out. In heaven, you wanted to do that. What are dentists going to do in heaven? You know, because of Jesus' resurrection, it, it, it's a trade up in every single way, down to the very smallest details, right? As it says, the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable. And the mortal, that was a subject to death, must clothe itself with the immortal. An existence with no death 
with no aches, no pains, no glasses, no disabilities. You know, there's a church outside of Milwaukee, Holy Hill. It's actually a, a large complex of, of, of many different buildings for religious purposes. And, and off kind of the main church at Holy Hill, there's a side little chapel. And, and I remember going there as a child, and, and outside of this chapel, there were crutches and leg braces and wheelchairs. And I asked my grandparents, why are they all sitting here? And said, well, some people believe if you walk into this chapel, you're going to be cured of all your illnesses. So you can leave all the crutches and leg braces and wheelchairs there. I walked in unable to hear in my left ear. I walked out unable to hear in my left ear. So I wouldn't encourage you to race there thinking that some miracle is going to happen. But that's really what heaven is going to be like. Because Jesus rose from the dead, we're going to trade up. And, and I, I do picture the gates of heaven. All these glasses are going to be left there. We won't need them. All these crutches are going to be left there. We won't, we won't need those anymore. Um, I, I, I think... When I've traded up to heaven, I'm going to be constantly looking to my left because I'll finally be able to hear in that ear that I haven't been able to hear for like 45 years. You know, what, what's it going to be for you that you'll be trading up after your physical death? What, what, what's it going to be for you where the perishable is now clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality? Then that saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. This is actually in the Bible, in the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 25, you can read it home. It was written 700 years before the Christians in the city of Corinth read it here. It stood written for 700 years, and you know what? We're 2,000 years later than those Corinthian Christians, and this verse still stands written, and the truth is still applicable. Death has been swallowed up in victory. It is a fact has been swallowed up. It is emphatic has been swallowed up. Death is, is so swallowed up and gone that just this tiny trace remains that we call physical death. But even physical death is just our training up from death to eternal life. Right? From an existence of loss to an existence where there is only victory. Death has been swallowed up in victory. We get to trade up because of this. Now, I know that this is weird to talk about physical death as trading up and to talk about physical death as something good, as something to look forward to. Right, to trade dying for living and rags for righteousness and sinner for saint. You know, God's word goes even farther. God's word actually taunts death. Now, the, the, the man who wrote this, uh, Paul, he's quoting another verse from the Old Testament in his taunt of death with these phrases. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O grave, is your sting? Death is put in the middle of the sentence. That's the place in the original language that would get the least emphasis to say, death, you don't get emphasis. Death, you don't frighten me. Death, go bother somebody else. I am not one of those who are afraid of you. And it is really asked and is taunting, where? Hey, death, where's your victory? Oh, that's right, you ain't got one. Me, I got Jesus. I got an empty tomb. Death, where is your sting? That's right, it's gone. You're like a bumblebee without a sting. Who would be afraid of that? I, no translation of the Bible adds the words na 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 in this verse. But that's really the idea. Come on, death, you got nothing on me. I'm trading up. You see, the power of sin is the law, and the sting of death is sin. You see, it's still painful to go through this process of trading up. Because it still involves physical death. And there is still a sting involved in that death. As 
Because I know deep down I died because I'm a sinner. It was actually one of God's first promises in the whole Bible. When you sin, you will die. And God repeated that promise. The soul that sins is the one that will die. And the power that's with that sin is found in the law. And now we know that earthly laws have different earthly consequences and different earthly penalties. But when it comes to God's law, there's just sin. Notice that these verses don't talk about sins as the problem, right? That, you know, there's just a few bad things that we do, and if we would just quit doing them, we could fix these problems of our sins. The problem is sin. Just the big, nasty, ugly mass. The, the condition that we are naturally born into. Sin is not just what we do. Sin is who we are. So the thanks be to God because he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory over sin, that big, huge, nasty, ugly mass with his death on the cross. And he gives us the victory over death with his resurrection from the dead. He gives us the victory. You know, you actually know a Greek word. You know it's the Greek word for victory. You've seen it on shoes and t-shirts, all the ones with the swoosh. That Nike, it's the Greek word for victory. So when you see that on a shirt or you see those shoes with the swoosh, taunt death. Say, death, I've got a victory. And you don't. Death, I've got a savior who's alive. I'm not scared to die. Death, I've got one who defeated you, and he is on my side, so I defeat you. I defy you. Thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And he keeps on giving us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we're not waiting till next spring to celebrate Easter. We're celebrating it here in the fall. And actually, that's why the first followers of Jesus after his resurrection started to gather on Sunday. The Sunday was the day of the week that Jesus rose from the dead. And so every single week they gathered to celebrate their victory over death. They gathered to celebrate their trading up from death to life, from perishable to imperishable, from rags to righteousness, from sinner to saint. God keeps on giving us the victory day after day in baptism. And I could share countless, countless examples of believers that I've had the privilege to serve and talk to. And they share this victory at the times when it matters most. I can't tell you how many times at a funeral a believer has said to me, how does somebody get through this without Jesus? And I say, I kind of shrug and say, I don't know. And the good news is we don't have to know. Because we have Jesus. We have our victory. And your loved one who believed in Jesus is traded up. Or so many times believers facing surgery have said something word for word, almost like this. They'll say, Pastor, I'm looking at a win-win situation in the face. Because if the surgery goes well and I get physically better, that's a win. If the surgery doesn't go well and I die, well, I'll go to heaven. That's even better. right? So it's just a little win or a big win. Who talks that way? person who has victory in our Lord Jesus Christ. The person who knows that physical death is just trading up for something better. You know, I didn't tell you the, the rest of the story at that brewery. Uh, it happened that my son's friend had someone he knew who worked in the brewer's stadium. And uh, about the seventh inning, he pulled us out of those great 11th row seats and took us somewhere even better. 
he walked with us down in the interior part of the stadium, and we got to go see the batting cage where the players were warming up, and we were there like this close to the guys who were going to come into the game. Talk about trading up. We went from the Uber seats to the 11th row to face to face with the players. That's our lives as Christians. Just trading up to face to face with God, to heaven for all eternity with Jesus. Yeah, we got to go through physical death. That's just trading up to a better existence with Jesus forever. Amen. Please stand. <laughs> Let's say it again. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. We'll continue by singing the song tree. Gracious Father, you have restored to us the joy of your salvation. With happy hearts, we come before you and say, Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, 
Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who promised that wherever two or three come together in his name, there he is with them to shepherd his flock till he comes again in glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Thanks for being here. So glad you could join us to worship our risen Savior Jesus this morning. A new hymnal is coming out in our church body. Uh, we, in fact, have a couple of sample copies here. We also have many copies of the booklet that uh, gives a preview of some of the materials and things that will be included uh, in the new hymnal. There are those on the table in the entryway. Uh, feel free to take one of those, look through it, give you kind of a heads up of what's coming. Our worship team and worship leaders uh, are, are reviewing and, and looking through and deciding how best we can make use of these new materials. But it's actually not just the hymnal, there's actually a number of uh, materials that are coming out. And this hymnal is written not only just to have a book in a pew on Sunday, but there are actually a lot of materials for home use, for daily devotions, uh, scripture readings throughout the year. So we pray that as more of this becomes available and the hard copies that would be something you not only consider uh, using here at church, but having a copy for yourself at home uh, to use on an everyday basis. So again, you can take that preview booklet uh, if you're curious about some of the things coming out. And again, it'll be over the next months that uh, more and more will continue to come out about this. Thank you. Thank you. 